All right, in this video, we're going to go over the respiratory system. This is part of chapter three, the human body. I'm not going to go over every system in, in the book, but I, I do want to highlight two of the main systems that I really like to talk about in class. So let's talk about the respiratory system. So we have the respiratory system. And let's start with it first. And so I'm going to don't make fun of my drawings here. Try to do the best job I can. Here's a person. Here's their mouth. And uh, I'll do the best job that I can kind of drawing that. So we have, here's the nasal cavity that comes down. If you're out running in a cold environment, you want to try to breathe through your nose to warm that air. I'm going to try to make this quick so I don't run out of time on this video. I'm going to try to keep this video to about 15 minutes. And then we have the pharynx here so pharynx and then this is going to branch off so as we go through here it kinda branches off and so this other little passage here is gonna go off to the esophagus I'm not gonna label that right now since we're dealing just with the respiratory system that would go to the digestive system but let's talk about the larynx it's your voice box. It's going to be right around in that area. You have the trachea. Trachea. So we have the trachea there. And this is going to branch off here into bronchia. So we have our bronchia here. So we have our bronchi. These are two big branches here going out to the lungs, and they'll they'll branch off into smaller what's called bronchioles. So we'll label those bronchioles. It's really hard to write on this pad, so you'll have to bear with me. And those are going to break down into little small air-filled sacs. Let me draw those out. Called alveoli. Alveoli. And this is where the gaseous exchange, the gaseous exchange occurs. So let me blow this up. So I'm going to blow this little area up here where the alveoli occur because this is where, really where it's all done, where the gaseous exchange is done. So Break these down into little small fluid filled sacs, and you're going to have these small capillaries. So these are arteries coming from the heart. Since it's leaving the heart, we're going to call it an artery. And we're going to have CO2 here that's going to get exchanged so we can expire it out. So it gets it diffuses across this membrane into the alveoli and, and, and then we expire that out. CO2 is carried in the blood plasma, not in the red blood cells like oxygen is. And then we're going to have oxygen get exchanged. So we'll have O2 here get exchanged. And then this is going to travel back to the heart. So this is coming from the heart. So um, the right ventricle has pumped this out through the pulmonary artery. The CO2 is exchanged. We breathe it out and then oxygen is exchanged with the red blood cells and then that's taken back to the heart. And I'll draw that out for you in just a second. But the O2 is transported with red blood cells. The hemoglobin has four spots for oxygen to bind to. So oxygen binds to the hemoglobin inside the red blood cells and then is transported um, back to the heart where the left atrium will pump down to the left ventricle and the left ventricle pumps it out to the rest of the body, out through the arteries to the rest of the body. So CO2 is carried in the blood plasma as carbonic acid and O2 is carried in the red blood cells um, to get it back to the heart and eventually the heart will pump it back out to the tissues. And a portion of that blood supply will also feed the heart with oxygen so that it can maintain what it's doing. So let's talk about the heart for a second. So that's how the gaseous exchange occurs. So CO2 
Um, let, let's just start with the heart, and this will make more sense, and then I can go back and explain it. So here's our heart. Like I said, it's kind of hard to draw this. Actually, let me undo that. And I'm going to change color, make this a little bit more colorful. All right, so here is our heart. I'll kind of diagram it for you. All right, so we draw different areas. And I'm not going to go into the electrical system of the heart right now. I'm, I'll do that later when we start talking about AEDs. Actually, I should make this a little bit more pronounced. So if this person works out, that left ventricle is going to be, the muscle around it will be a little larger. So we have the right atrium. We have the right ventricle. We have a pulmonary artery. I'm just going to draw it right there coming off the right ventricle. We have the left atrium and left ventricle. So what happens is, and let me draw the aorta, the huge artery, the largest artery in the body. So there's the aorta, and I'll draw the bottom portion of the aorta going down through the midsection. So what happens is we have veins, and then veins return. Let me change the color of that. Let's make that a blue. So we have veins that return deoxygenated blood from the tissues. So the oxygen's already been used up, so the veins return it here to the right atrium. It's pumped down to the right ventricle. Then the right ventricle contracts and pumps us out to the lungs. So let me draw this out here. So let's just say those are a pair of lungs. So when the right ventricle pumps, it pumps it out through the pulmonary artery. And then that's where it gets oxygenated. That's where the CO2 is exchanged here, and we breathe out, and then oxygen it binds to the red blood cells. And once it binds to the red blood cells, let me change my color here. Once it is oxygenated, that changes the color of the red blood cells. And it is pumped back through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium down to the left ventricle. The left ventricle contracts and pumps it out through the aorta. And the aorta takes us out to tissue. So let's say these are muscles down here. Down through little capillaries that innervate the tissue and feed it with, with oxygen. And then once the oxygen is used up, It goes back from those capillaries into veins, and the veins return it back to the heart to get oxygenated, and then the process starts all over again. So for a quick recap, we have deoxygenated blood going to the right atrium down to right ventricle. It's pumped out through the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery takes it to the lungs where CO2 is exchanged in the alveoli from the blood plasma and we breathe that out to get rid of it so we don't have a buildup of carbonic acid in the body. And then we take in the O2. It's diffused across this little membrane. Both CO2 and, and O2 are diffused across that membrane and bind with the hemoglobin inside the red blood cell. And then once that's bound, then it travels back from the lungs to the left atrium, down through the left ventricle. Left ventricle contracts and pumps it out to the rest of the body. That's the reason if you exercise a lot and do a lot of cardiovascular exercise, the left ventricle will become larger. So this left ventricle will become larger because it has to pump more blood out. Plus, you'll, your heart will fill up with more blood per beat. So if you've ever taken an exercise class, heart rate, the amount of times your heart rate heart beats in a minute, heart rate times stroke volume equals your cardiac output, how much blood you can pump per beat. And that's what we're talking about here because a good healthy heart where if you exercise a lot, the left ventricle becomes larger so you can pump more blood per beat plus the heart will fill up with more blood. That's your stroke volume. And so that way you're more efficient and that will lower your resting heart rate because a strong heart doesn't have to beat as often as a weaker one. So somebody with a weak heart may have a heart rate of 
100 beats per minute or 90 beats per minute because it's weak. It doesn't fill up with much blood per beat, and so it has to beat more often. But a good strong heart like a runner's heart may only beat 50 times per minute or 60 times per minute if you're doing a lot of cardio or respiratory exercise because it's strong. It doesn't have to beat as often. And this will benefit you throughout your lifetime, making you healthier. Think of your heart as a car engine. The more beats you put on it in a lifetime, the sooner it's going to wear out. So if you can have a lower resting heart rate throughout the day, you'll have less beats on it throughout the day and less beats out of it throughout your lifetime, so the longer it will last. So I hope this was helpful explaining the respiratory system and the circulatory system to some extent. This will be more important when we start talking about rescue breathing and CPR and AEDs, and we'll go a little bit more in depth. There are a lot of other body systems out there uh, that we could talk about, but these are the ones I really want to focus on for our skills. So I hope this was useful, and I'll see you in the next video.